to help you with the written assessment for unit AEO2K. So um, this is question one. Let's have a look at question one. And as you can see, there are four parts to question one, A, B, C, and D. So we're going to start with A. Get this to work, presentation to work. Okay, so question A is what size fuse should be used when fitting an 800 watt amplifier to a vehicle with a 12 volt system? And it's important that you show your calculations in your answer, please. So, to answer this one, to do the calculation, we need to use our, one of our Ohm's law triangles, <clears throat> and it's this one. And uh, the, there's a legend W for watts, A for amps, B for volts. Okay, so to use this triangle, uh, if we know the watts and we know the voltage, we can calculate the current by dividing the watts by the volts. Or if we know the amperage and we know the voltage, then we can work out the wattage by multiplying amps times volts. Okay, so uh, let's go back and check the question. The question is, what size fuse should be used when you fitting an 800 watt amplifier to a vehicle with a 12 volt system? So we know we've, we've got a consumer that's going to consume 800 watts and it's running on a 12 volt system. So let's slot those into our triangle. So we put that it's an 800 watt amplifier running on a 12 volt system. And because the 800 is above the 12, uh, that means we need to divide. So 800 divided by 12 will give us the current. Okay, so you guys should be able to work that one out now. Um, just remember you do need to show your calculations. Okay, one other important thing here is that what we've just worked out there is how much current the amplifier will consume in its normal operation. So we don't want the fuse to blow when it gets to this point. That would be uh, pretty pointless, really. So uh, we need to allow a little bit extra before the fuse blows. So we, in other words, what we call a tolerance. And generally speaking, that is about 25% extra. So you need to add on 25% to whatever you calculate this figure to be here. Okay, right, let's go back and try the uh, second part or part B of the question. So part B is when running audio leads and power leads to an amplifier, what care should be taken to ensure the least amount of interference is amplified? Okay, so you need to understand that the power leads and the audio leads are different. The power lead is the, is the cable that carries the electricity from the battery to the amplifier, fairly obvious. And the audio leads are the leads that transmit the signal from the amplifier to the speaker. So they're the speaker wires, if you like, what we would call the speaker wires. <clears throat> and uh, what this question is about is the fact that one can have an impact on the other or affect the operation of the other. So let's just have a look at that. What we know is that whenever electricity flows through a power cable, um, there will be a magnetic field around the outside of it. Let's just think about that. Okay, so we know that uh, um, electricity flowing through a conductor, what makes the electricity flow is EMF, electromotive force. The electromotive force is very similar, or we, we can think of it as being a magnetic field, if you like. So whenever there's electricity flowing through a conductor, uh, we know that it's magnetism making that happen. So there will be a weak magnetic field around the outside of the cable, as illustrated by this diagram. Now, if this is a power cable going to an amplifier, the amount of current will fluctuate, pulsate. So um, imagine you have a um, amplifier that's playing uh, a bit of drum and bass, shall we say. All right, so there's a pulsating bass beat. 
Now, every time that bass sound pulsates, we need more electricity to make that deep bass sound. So there'd be a pulsating flow of current through the conductor. And if the current is pulsating, then the strength of the magnetic field around the outside of that cable will also be pulsating, getting bigger, smaller, larger, smaller, pulsating magnetic field. Now the magnetic field will, if it's close enough to the speaker wires, will have an impact on the speaker wires. It will, the magnetic field will attract electrons in the speaker wire. And the speaker wire is what drives the speakers. So we will um, hear the effect of that magnetic field because it will generate a, a sound through the speaker. Uh, so that's, that's what interference is. It's caused by the magnetic field generated around the outside of the power cable being too close to the speaker wires. So to prevent interference, we've got options, but they boil down to uh, option one, keep the, the, the power wire and the speaker wires as far apart as possible to reduce the impact of that magnetic field or to insulate them somehow. Um, often you will see power cables insulated with an aluminium foil. Okay, so hopefully that answers that question. Let's have a look at the next one. So uh, part C of the question is a customer has asked for an in-dash-DVD player and screen to be fitted. The wiring diagram shows that a switched uh, from the handbrake switch should be fed to the unit. Why is this? Okay, well, hopefully you should uh, understand, I'm sure you do understand, that if the driver could see and watch a DVD uh, on a screen, that's obviously going to be a distraction and would be dangerous. So hopefully you guys should be able to figure out the answer to this question. Um, why would there be a switch that's related to the handbrake cable? Uh, I think I'm going to leave it there because I'm sure you guys can work the, out the answer to that. So have a look at the next question, or part D of question one, sorry. Part D is what is the difference between a woofer and a tweeter? So remember this whole question is about in-car entertainment. So we're talking audio equipment, speakers, etc. So a woofer and a tweeter are a type of speaker, or both types of speakers. Uh, what you've got to do is find out what the difference is. And I'm going to leave you guys to do some uh, reading up or research, internet research, whatever you need to do to, to find the answer to that. Okay, so that's the end of this help video on question one of AEO2K. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it helps. I'll do another video for question two, but I'm going to stop this one now. Thanks for listening.